Are you ready to make over your tennis backhand? Let's turn it into the solid, confident shot you've always dreamed of. This five-day training program will make that a reality, but only if you follow along and put in the reps. Welcome to day five. Today, our focus is on bringing you power, acceleration, and racket head speed. That starts by training as much looseness and efficiency of movement as possible. That's why in the first drill, we start with smooth shadow swings at about 25% speed. I'm working on leading the swing with my hips and shoulders while keeping my arms as relaxed as possible which is the opposite of what most non-professional athletes do when trying to make more backhand power. Notice how I start with a strong load where my back is pointed to the other side of the court. Then I progressively ramp up the swing speed while keeping my kinetic chain usage and looseness high quality. That's tough to do, but exactly what I want you to work on for the first part of your training session. I'm using a square stance here, but you can feel free to use whatever you're comfortable with. The next drill is pretty unique and a little bit tricky, so I hope you're up for the challenge. I start by making a shadow swing with a frame that has no strings in it. And then on the second rep, I drop a ball with the goal of making the exact same swing, even though I won't hit the ball. The training purpose behind this is in learning how to stay flowing and relaxed, even though your brain and body are expecting a collision between the ball and racket. It sounds crazy, but trust me, the first time you try this, you'll notice your tension and swing speed increase immediately when the ball's there. The tough part is maintaining your tempo on each set of two swings. Once you have success at a slow speed, you can progressively increase acceleration like I have in the video. Drill three is a continuation of the same concept as the previous exercise, but now you'll actually make contact with the ball using a strung racket. I begin at a really slow, calm swing speed and make two shadow swings followed by an actual hit. My goal is to lead with the body, keep my arms totally relaxed, and make all three swings exactly the same amount of effort and speed. When you're practicing at home, once you gain confidence and comfort with a slow speed, then you'll slowly increase acceleration while staying really mindful about the tension in your body, like what I'm demonstrating. If you pay attention, you'll almost certainly feel more tightness creep into your swing as you try to swing faster. That's exactly what we're working hard to avoid. So don't rush through this and feel free to drop down in speed if you need to so the quality of your training can stay high. By the way, if you're going to take your game to the next level, which is why you're here in the first place, then make sure you equip yourself with a step-by-step -step guide the next time you're on court. Just click the link in the description or head to 5daybackhand.com. All right, now on to drill four, which features a narrow focus on increasing swing size and range of motion. The two specific elements I'm focusing on are my load and extension of the racket. By the time I follow through, I want my butt cap to face out to the right. For lefties, it would be the left. This is where working on relaxation earlier comes into play because if I'm not loose enough and the swing is not loose enough, then I don't have a great enough path built up for energy to follow through to this position and especially not to create the amount of power I want. So this long, full range of motion with my body and swing path allows for huge potential for acceleration. All these reps should start slow and calm and build up to faster and calm so that you can simply focus on quality of execution. Notice the calm. Drill five takes the next step by starting to practice hitting the ball with your longer, more exaggerated swing size. You'll see me practice this framework with two shadow swings followed by a drop and hit repetition. My focus is on completing the same benchmarks from drill four while maintaining good smoothness and balance. As you get comfortable with this technique, you can start slowly increasing your swing speed. Combining speed with length will give you the ultimate in power, spin, and offense, but be really careful to progress very slowly or else tension will creep in and kill your results. 
Next, I'm going to bring everything together into a live ball rally, which is always the most difficult setting to try something new. While Ian and I rally, my goal is to start each exchange with a few slow but full and relaxed swings and slowly ramp up my swing speed until it's pretty aggressive while maintaining control of what I'm doing. When you try this, your tendency is going to be to get tight, shorten your swing path, and cut down on how much you use your body. If you feel that happening, pause for a few shadow swings, drop a few balls for yourself to hit while you make sure execution is excellent, and then go back into live rallies again. Controlling the quality of your training in this way is the key to being successful with your backhand improvements.